So, um, so this was regarding the metals and crystals in general. So the question is, what happens when you have ionic uh, crystals? So what that means is that ionic crystal is a crystal that is composed of cations and anions, and they carry different charges. Overall, the crystal itself is uh, an, uh, uh, it's neutral, so there is no, uh, the, uh, there is no charge that the, that the uh, crystal itself carries. And the ionic crystals in general are mostly insulators. So we will see that, for example, by changing the concentration of different types of defects, you can change the conductivity of these materials as well. You can change, for example, their color. But in general, if you form some kind of intrinsic defects to, uh, to keep the charge neutrality, you have to compensate one, part, uh, one type of a defect with another one. So we will see that in ionic type of crystals, these intrinsic type of defects are typically happening in pairs or in different combinations of defects. So if I take one atom out or if I take one atom and substitute it in the crystal, I have to form another type of a defect to compensate for the charge that is associated with that. And for that a reason, we will introduce kroger wink notation, which will tell us how we typically describe these types of defects, and it will um, help us to identify, instead of simply describing you have a, this vacancy, etc., this will be a very compact way of describing them and writing uh, reactions that happen uh, in these materials. So when we talk about ionic point defects, um, so we can again form vacancies and interstitials, and the vacancies can exist in ionic materials and ceramics, both for cations and anions. So you can simply remove them from the lattice uh, uh, itself. So for example, this would be a cation vacancy. This would be anion vacancy. But for the interstitials, typically the interstitials exist only for cations because these ions are much smaller than anions. So in ionic crystals, it's extremely difficult. So there is, any, uh, there is a huge energy penalty to introduce an interstitial that is anion. So for, that, for example, in this particular case, there is only cation vacancy that is indicated. I'm sorry, a cation interstitial. So again, everything is related to the amount of energy that is required to form this type of a defect. And this will tell you what is the probability of finding these types of defects in crystals. So I already alluded to the fact that if you form one type of a defect, let's say that you f uh, remove one anion from this crystal, because it carries certain charge, you have to compensate that charge in the crystal to, to, to keep the charge neutrality of the entire crystal. And for that reason, if I simply remove this, I have to form another type of a defect in the crystal to compensate for that. And there are two different types of uh, combinations that exist in ionic crystals. So it's called a Frankel defect and Schottky defect. So a Frankel defect would be a cation vacancy and a cation interstitial. So what that basically means is that you remove one cation, but then you, you form an interstitial that is compensating for that charge. Where would be the example for, for that? Where would be a Frankel defect in this particular image? Yes? The bottom. The bottom, yeah. So there is a missing cation here, but it's compensated here. So I have a vacancy of cation and also an interstitial. So this would be a, called a Frankel defect. We will see in a couple of minutes that this is not necessarily a pair. So there might be multiple types of defects that are associated with that, depending on, again, what is the charge that you are replacing, etc. So it can be, a, so it's called a Frankel group or a Frankel type of a defect. It's not necessarily a pair only. Another type of a defect that can exist in ionic crystals is a Schottky defect. It's a pair of cation and anion vacancies, and it's indicated here. So there, is, there are two vacancies of the opposite charges, so this would be called a, together, they would be called a Schottky defect. Okay, anyhow, so how do we describe this? So there will be, we will use a called kruger wink notation, which will simply tell us, and it will describe a certain type of a defect and associated charge with that. So it will have a very general notation, so there will be a letter X, letter Y and Z, and each of these letters have a specific meaning. So we will start with X. So the X itself represents what is on the site. So for example, if there is a vacancy, we will use a letter V, so this will be vacancy. 
or it can be an atom, for example, oxygen atom, uh, calcium atom, etc. So I will show you a couple of examples, but if there is a letter V, it means that this is a vacancy, and the letters Y and Z will describe <coughs> us what kind of... Yeah. Okay, so the letter Y represents what type of site is occupied. So for example, we will see that um, this can be an interstitial, so this, we will uh, use a letter I. Uh, it can be an atom, etc. And then the, the, this symbol Z would simply tell us what is the charge. So we will see that we will have a positive charge, which is simply a dot. There will be a comma, which will be a negative charge. And if there is an X, it is a zero, uh, relative, uh, 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 zero charge. So this is also uh, listed here. So if you forget about this, so dot, comma, uh, and the cross will correspond to the positive, negative, and zero charge, respectively. So we will go through a couple of examples, and we will see how we label these uh, different types of vacancies, interstitials, etc., etc., using the Kroger ring notation. So, if we, for example, start from uh, calcium chloride, so cation would be K, so this would be cation, and this would be my anion. So if I have a cation vacancy using the, this Kruger ring notation, what would that simply uh, mean? That I have a vacancy, it's a cation vacancy, so it's potassium, and it carries what kind of charge? If I remove one positive ion, what would be the resulting? It would be negative, so I would use so this would be simply the notation that will tell me that there is a cation vacancy in this particular crystal. Okay? So I can do the same thing. So I can do the anion vacancy. So this is the vacancy. Chlorine atom and it carries the positive charge. Uh, then cation interstitial. So again, I have potassium. It is interstitial and because I'm adding one positive charge, it, is, it carries the positive net charge. And anion interstitial, again, chlorine atom, it's interstitial and carries a negative charge. So this is simply a way how we would write these types of defects inside of this particular crystal. I would like to point out that, well, if you have an, a, a, a different type of ionic crystal, where, uh, for example, in this particular case, beryllium carries two plus charge and fluorine carries single minus charge, then this would look slightly different. So if I have a cation vacancy, so I will label this as vacancy. It is barium. And if I remove this, how many charges and what type of charge does it carry? Two, two minuses, right? So I would have two commas. If I have anion vacancy, again, it's a vacancy. And if I remove one worried atom, how many charges does it carry and what kind? One positive, that's right. And then if I have cation interstitial, so this is barium, it's interstitial and carries two charges. And if I have anion interstitial, it's a <coughs> interstitial and carries one charge. Okay? So again, you need to know what exactly is the starting composition and what kind of uh, charges it carries. Okay? So, we already mentioned that if you form a certain type of a defect in an ionic crystal, you have to compensate it with another type of a defect. So we'll try to learn how we, we write these equations. And more importantly, for you, for example, have different types of materials that intermix and the charge that is associated with, with each ion might be changing. So how do, what are the reactions that might be happening in these? So for example, we mentioned that there are two types of complexes in ionic crystals in terms of the point defects. One is the Schottky and the other is Frankel. So if you take an example of from the previous uh, page, and if I think about the Schottky group, so this would be a pair of cation and anion vacancies. How would I write this is that I'm starting from the zero charge, which I will write as now. And this is forming two types of defects. So one is this uh, vacancy and the other is the opposite vacancy. In the case of TiO2, what would that mean is that again, I'm having titanium which carries four plus and oxygen each carries two minus. So then the Schottky defect in this particular case would be the vacancy of titanium 
that carries four charges plus two vacancies, two oxygen vacancies, each carrying two charges. Again, this is again to emphasize that the Schottky defect or the Schottky complex doesn't have to have only two defects. It can have multiple complex, like in the, in the last example, there would be three different types of point defects. A Frankel defect would be then cation vacancy and cation interstitial pair. So in the case of uh, lithium oxide, it's Li2 uh, plus oxygen 2, um, I'm sorry, 2 minus. So I would have two vacancies. One would be lithium and the other would be, I'm sorry, the other would be interstitial. The first one would carry one charge and the other the opposite charge. And in zinc oxide, if I have zinc oxide, each carries two plus and two minus. So this would be the vacancy of zinc plus the zinc interstitial. <coughs> in both of these cases, again, the Frankel defects, because it's a pair, it would be a Frankel pair.